Okay, so we're going to be discussing the English. Now, here's a crude map of Northern Europe. England is here. These are the borders. I'm going to use blue for my crappy map of England. Or actually probably up here to here. Because we have Scotland that's up here. This is Wales. Now, Rome had occupied, the Celts were in, in um, southern Britain for a long time, and then the Romans occupied that. Now, the English, the upper crust English, at least from the uh, Enlightenment until the uh, 1950s, they liked to think that they were somehow descendants of Rome. Well, the their ancestors, their Anglo-Saxon Anglo ancestors, were actually here. Right here. The Frisian coast. Here, here, and here. They were Germanic peoples. After the uh, Romanized, the, the, the Roman army left, in 410 when Rome was hacked, and you had the Latinized Celts there, or the Romanized Celts. You had, uh, some say they made a deal with uh, these warlords over here that took uh, Kent, which is right here, and then they proceeded to uh, exterminate the population. This can be seen, this, can, this is shown through the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle, all seven versions of them. Every historian at the time records this. Uh, DNA confirms this and archaeology confirms this. Although there's a stupid documentary on BBC trying to say, no, there were all, always Anglo-Saxons there with Germanic blood. They just happened to act Celtic for thousands of years until uh, the Romans left and then they converted. They just dropped all their technology, language, religion, culture, and then became Germanic, even though they were of Germanic blood, but they never acted German. Silly. So they took over all this, and they were stopped at the uh, border of Wales, which is, at the time, an area that's where the Arthur legend springs up, because they were stopped. So they took over this area. They're not uh, Celt, like the Irish. Actually, many of the... Um, Many of the uh, the noblemen that could escape escaped to Ireland. <coughs> um, said that King Arthur is Irish. That's not wholly untrue because King Arthur would have been a Celt, a Christianized Celt, and Ireland was Christianized at that time. <coughs> but the Anglo Saxons came in. They lost all the technology that they had. They did not have built worlds. They did not read. They did not write. Uh, it took a while for them to start that again. Whereas in Ireland. Since they had adopted Christianity, they um, retained Latin and Greek and how to read it, had roads and had um, ancient law and read the philosophers and everything. And um, the what's known as England, Anglo England, Anglo Saxons, and the Jutes had to um, relearn all this stuff. They were getting hundreds of years later. There was a competition between the. Uh, the Roman Church and the Gaelic Church, and the Roman Church won out. But uh, this is the funny thing: whenever there's a snooty English guy talking about this, you know, from those old videos pre 1950, or even in the 60s, how the English nobility of the English, when the people, the Italians, of, or the, the Romans of Italy and Spain, were had beautiful marble temples and were reading Greek philosophers, the Anglo-Saxons were in Scandinavia living in mud huts and eating dog. Um, doesn't mean that they're lower people or anything like that, it's just, you know, they were uncivilized just like the rest of uh, Scandinavia. And it's a pain to them to hear that Ireland actually was far more civilized and actually brought um, England out of the Dark Ages, or tried to. The uh, Ir Ireland has a strange history. The Irish had a, starting from <clears throat> the place they were, they 
had a long have had a longer culture than the English. That's where the Anglo-Saxons come from, and the Normans actually come from up here, and they did their Viking raids, and they settled in, you know, France as a protectorate, and then they came back and came up in there. All right, peace to you.